Rare Hasanavi compilations. It's called Race to Dinner. Anti-racism dinner club. Race to Dinner appears like charity, but rakes in profits for his two leaders. It's Syra Rayo and Regina Jackson who uh, do these uh, things called the Progressive Supper Club called Race to Dinner, okay, where they get paid up to five grand, and both of them just sit there and just, like, rip into white women who paid five grand. Wait, there was a documentary called Deconstructing Karen. Deconstructing Karen is the documentary they did for this, this dinner. I didn't realize it was about this. I cannot remember a time that I have not woken up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. White women, you have got to get on board for humanity to have. Yeah, you have to get, you've got to get on board, white women, to, you know, give us five grand so that we could tell you you're racist. The only thing that's gonna change this is if we change the cultural DNA. So I want a show of hands of everyone at this table who is racist? <laughs> Yo, I love this, dude. Oh. <laughs> I must confess that over the past few years, I no. have been grave. No, don't, don't associate. Oh, come on, no, that's. Duh. Disappointed with the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice. Oh no. I have been in this work for a very long time. I marched in the 60s. I have worked on presidential campaigns. And what I know is that race to dinner allows us to have radically honest conversation. Sarah and Regina found a race to dinner in 2019 to help white women learn how they uphold white supremacy. The market we have identified is white women who call themselves liberal or progressive or Democrat. The foot of white supremacy and patriarchy is firmly on their necks, just like it's on ours. I know it sounds bizarre, but I used to be a white feminist. A white woman trapped in a brown body and then I, you know, woke up and I started doing anti-racism work. Say the words white people and those white people want to come and kill you. <laughs> okay, yes, move on. We know Even if it means one white woman at a time. I'm going to keep going. By the way, most of those people who wrote that are probably men. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to like Definitely not like the Hillary Clinton pantsuit wearing white lip moms. That oh, my okay. God. <laughs> I've been following Syra on social media for a long time. I wanted to be Syra's friend. She's so triggering and it's so good. It's so needed. I wanted to like graduate and be like, I have my certificate and I like survived a dinner with Race to Dinner and like here's my certificate and oh, now I'm no. like super woke, which is all white supremacy like all, every single bit of that every single bit of that is all totally white supremacy i'm one of the beckys i'm somewhere and here's the thing i don't know what kind of becky i am but i'm pretty sure that my black and brown friends know exactly what kind of becky i am <laughs> this is content this is so good bro were the people making fun of the uh, were the people making this documentary making fun of them what the fuck was going on when they made this are they making this as like a, oh God, oh my God. Are they making this as like a promotion? It seems like they're making it as a promotion, but like, I can't read this as anything but like a joke. I know the editor, it is serious. Now, here's the thing that I want to say, okay? Some of these white ladies are very well-intentioned, okay? And, and I'm with you, okay? But I'm going to say what I always say, and that is just be normal just be normal white ladies be normal be normal be normal be normal this is just like two ladies that are transparently banking on white guilt that's it and white guilt is not normal white guilt still comes from a place of like uh you know otherizing yourself and otherizing black people and just like not behaving in a normal way oh man oh oh so good okay this is, is great. a becky or a karen in general, it's a pejorative term, mostly used for describing an entitled white woman. The worst of the Karens use their societal privilege to oppress people of color, most commonly calling a manager, or worse, calling the cops. That's there a constable. An American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. Please send the cops. Illegally 
somebody selling water without a permit? Yeah. On my property. It's not your property. Hi, I'm asking you if this is your property. You're it's accusing me of a crime, correct? I am not a racist person. You just you just made but a racist you know what? comment. You need to go home. You know what a signal is? Guess what? Even in China, they have signal lights. I hear you have a problem with these gentlemen having a barbecue oh, here at the lake. Why are you taking the posters down? Because all lives matter. No. no. None of these ladies are joining the race to dinner shit, dude. Like what? She is crazy. You're crazy. I'm absolutely crazy. Look, look, look. Where yeah. is there safety? There is no safety. I would kill a but the law says I can't kill the This is a this was in California fire just straight up in the valley. Oof. Every single one of those instances I've covered and also I remember. They're awesome. They're like Pokemon, dude. Are you kidding me? Some of the greatest hits. Bitch, get out of here, man. I'm gonna call 911. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm also, some of those women did get fired. Please send the cops immediately. I don't care about your Facebook or your video. The term has been criticized for being sexist, but what is more Karen-like behavior than being furious for being called a Karen? Either way, there is one good thing that the term has produced. For white women, it has raised awareness about the intersection of race and gender and how that plays out in the society every single day. I mean, here's what I'll say. Class is probably not gonna be a factor here, okay? Considering that if you have $5,000 in disposable income, just like if you have $15 in disposable income, 15,000 for, uh, for the other male version of this camp, uh, I suspect that you are, uh, you've hit a, a level of financial comfort, you know? In 2019, filmmakers reached out to Denver area residents seeking white women willing to have an honest on-camera conversation in a, <laughs> about race in America. Race, it's an urgent issue, although it's one of those issues that, is anybody ever going to come to the same place? Oh my God, they're having like crudités, dude. It's awesome. This is awesome. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Syra. Hey, Lori. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Jackie, nice to meet you. Thank you all. Thank you for being here this evening. My name is Syra Rao. Thank you all so much for coming. We have this elephant in the room that's killing us all. White supremacy and racism is bad for everyone, including white people. I think we have a window right now, and you all are the key. White women are the key. You have more power than you'll ever know. In this time and place, if you all can join us and join our sisterhood, the world changes. That's why I'm here, because it all starts with conversation. I'd love if everyone could just go around the table and briefly introduce yourselves. I have two young children, and it's important for me that they grow up colorblind, right? I'm an artist and a barista, and I learned about this through Syra, through your Facebook. The reason I'm here is because I've always thought of myself as being like kind of woke. And I mean, you know, my best friend is Mexican. My partner is biracial. We have these conversations all the time. But then through following your posts and interacting on your posts, I realized I'm not doing that great. <laughs> and I feel like there's a racist white man living in my brain and it's my dad's voice. <laughs> I'm a descendant of slave traders who believes very strongly in telling ugly history. It's an honor to be here, and I'm willing and wanting to get uncomfortable because I think that's what we need. This is the exact opposite of what I said when I said white people be normal. <laughs> they're, they're just being abnormal right now, okay? We just saw three different degrees of, like, not being normal from three different kinds of, of white people. One saying, like, I want my children to be colorblind. Immediate self-report. I'm half Mexican, half white, and my family has every shade under the sun in it. Um... So for me, race has never really been He's a, a thing. half Mexican, half white. But like you can be a white Mexican. You know what I mean? Like that's not. <laughs> Why did she say my? I'm half Mexican, half white. <laughs> like <laughs> what the? F okay, so you're double white. You're ginger. My kids are biracial. So my husband is Hispanic and white, and I don't see color. I don't see. So how she said, I'm I'm blinded to color. Like it doesn't <laughs> me at all. Y'all, when we bleed, we bleed red. I'm here tonight because I'm confused. I watched my son feel victimized. He felt that because he was a white male, that he was a victim of reverse racism. We're all human. We all have a light, a heart shining within us that needs to be seen. 
We all need to be a little bit better and just recognize the love. Bro, every single one of these ladies is calling the cops on a black person. Okay, I'm saying it. Maybe not the barista, but like, <laughs> come on. In each and every one of us. Every single dinner, without fail, we've got like the woke wars. And so it really is this like being wedded to how not racist you are, but it's a start. It's a start and you've got to start somewhere. One of the things we know is that you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. So we're here to help you acknowledge some things. So I've heard this a couple times already, um, colorblind and you don't see color. I, and I'm just going to drop the bomb here. That's white supremacy. Color blindness is what <laughs> she wants to chime in so bad. She's like, hold on now. You even said, I don't see the color of anyone's skin because when we cut ourselves open, we all bleed red. So you acknowledge that you see the red. How can you not see the color of our skin? Because to me, I, I mean, I've my husband's Hispanic. I've dated every race. It doesn't. To me, I see inside. I see your love, your morals, morals your values. I see. Yo, she's about to drop the MLK quote. You know. I, she's about to be like, I have a dream that we, we don't judge people by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. You know what I'm saying? Just like. <laughs> also, I love I love that her her retort is like, well, you see the color red. It's like, yeah, that's an analogy, man. She's just. Uh, uh. What we have in, in common, like my husband, we enjoy doing things together, like the different things I don't see. Maybe like your experience in the world is different than theirs. Yeah. You walk through the world with a different experience because you are a white woman. Bro, these people pay five grand for this. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, this shit's awesome, dude. <laughs> Every part of this is so dumb. Like, dude, dude, you come to the house and I have a broadcast, I'll berate you for free, okay? You don't even need to give me $5 to avoid the top of the hour ad break or nothing. Which, by the way, that's not a segue. Like, I'm, I'm saying it. Like, I already did the segue earlier. Like, <laughs> you know, you, you, I'll do it for free. Just come in here and say some dumb shit, I will fucking berate you. When you say you're colorblind, you erase us. But you're not being defensive as well. I know we're, we're, all we're sharing our, our truth. truth. And I'm sharing my truth too. I mean, that to me is amazing. Yeah. We need. Yeah, get after it. Yeah. Ooh, come on. Make them work for that five grand. Come on now. I think this person is like one of those, like, uh, you know, sees a black person and like wants to wash their feet type liberals. You know what I'm saying? She popped off so quick when she's I'm a descendant of slavers. Like I caught the vibes of like the whole like I made my son uh shackle himself alongside myself and we went to like black neighborhoods and we were just like, you know, apologizing profusely, that sort of shit. Most people will not change until they have what I call a significant emotional event. You've mentioned it and you've mentioned it. Being married to a black person or a brown person, having brown or black children does not make you impervious to racism. You cannot, frankly, f your way out of racism. How many of you would trade places with a black person in this society? Raise your hand. Slavery's gonna say me, maybe? Come on, I say it. I don't know the answer to that. Well, it's yes or no. Know, How know, many of you would do it? I know I would. I mean, I, 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 I dated a Hispanic no. very dark. No, no, no I'm not talking about Hispanic. So the the question is. is but I was gonna she said, I dated a Hispanic. I was thinking of myself of having very dark skinned children. <laughs> Yo! Bro, this shit is wild, dude. It's so good. This is so good oh my god oh dude everyone at this table is awful in like varying degrees okay oh this was made for me this was like tailor made for me bro oh my god this was made for us the question is how many of you would be willing to trade places like it's not like she even had that child she was like i considered it seriously <laughs> and then i was like i don't want no brown child <laughs> I think I would. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. No. Okay. I'm not saying there's not racism. Absolutely not. It's just saying I don't see it. Yeah, but you know how not, racist this country not is. Not to the degree that you do. Oh, no, you will never know. 
You know, in this country, we created the criminalization of black people. And when your skin is seen as a weapon, you're never unarmed. And that's why black boys and men and women are dying in the street with their hands up. I was born in 1950 and everything was in black and white. I am myself now almost 70, four generations out of slavery. I am a mother. I have two adult children. I have four grandchildren, 11 siblings, and each of them has children. So this work is so important to me. The more you think about white privilege and racism, the more you get why white people don't want to talk about it. They just want to be in denial, denial, denial. I don't think as a black person, I have the luxury of sitting around and doing nothing. Their skin we have being seen as a weapon is a really good way of putting it into perspective. I think, damn. Cry. Oh my God, it's working. It's working. First of all, oh, by the way, the things that she's saying, well, not her, the things that the other lady is saying are true. Like, of course. But remember, like, you got to remember the format, okay? You got to remember what's going on here. <laughs> like, they're saying that, but like, there's a difference there, okay? They're not just like, they're not, <laughs> you know, they're little bit of a grift okay leave the table and go into the living room there that's right there and there's some kleenex and whatever you need <laughs> does anybody know why we would have that rule because this is about white supremacy and not our personal feelings uh -huh. right mm -hmm. and when a white woman starts crying what happens all the Everybody attention is everybody knows that yeah. All the attention. Damn, you said alting. <laughs> That's the only rule that we have. Does anyone want to cry right now? <laughs> no? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so I want a show of hands of everyone at this table who is racist. The shame. I, I, I want to cry. <laughs> so I can't sit here? No. You gotta go. <laughs> Sorry, sis. Ah! I have to hold it in. Okay. Ah! What? So I saw a couple people surprised that I raised my hand. When I said that I was racist, I am racist against black people. So it's, it's institutional. Indians are institutionally racist against black people. Deconstructing Bro, that parents shit's crazy. is dismantling your own white supremacy. I think news, we could all agree, <laughs> than when we were younger in our age, right? No, that's what not are, true. How does, how does the news make things worse? Because they, like when I was younger, the things that were, that were shown were not shown when I was younger. But I feel like it's more rampant now. People have a free pass to just go and be their white supremacist self on display because yes. there's a free pass for it, in my opinion. I mean, given our current political climate right. and the leader of our country. When I was in Charleston, South Carolina last summer, I get into my lift and the guy turned around and looked at me and he said, lady, he goes, I hate to have to say this to you, but if, if I get pulled over, you're just another black woman and uh, he's black. And he said, put your hands up, do as they say, do. I don't believe that happened. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't believe that happened. I'm going to call. I'm going to call cap on that. Okay. That's, that's not a thing that definitely did not happen. That is. <laughs> and then everybody clapped. <laughs> Yo, that was LeBron levels, dude. What? Stop. And then the cab driver yelled, this is MAGA country. <laughs> he actually told you that. Yeah, of course. Oh, dear God. Of course. It, to protect her. To protect him and to protect me. Where were you? In that's South the South life Carolina. he lives. And so that's I his reality. But that's, that's insane. But that, that's his reality, whether it's insane or no, not. No, I'm not saying he's insane. I'm saying it I is insane. I get it. Insane. But Can what we're it? saying is. It's true. I was a cab driver. <laughs> I want to ask also to stop acting shocked. So part of white feminism is, is acting so surprised. Why are you telling us not to act the way that we act if it is surprising? Because to that me, that is surprising. White, that upholds white supremacy. So what yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's surprising to me too because of how insane that story is, okay? I'm sorry, that's not a real story. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's so stupid. I'm asking all of you that when <laughs> we express to you, and I'm not just talking about Regina and I, because when this dinner is over, like this is a blip, right? You go back into the world. And when people of color trust you enough to tell you their story, believe. That's the, bro, that, that, that's the heart of that, okay? At the heart of that story lies this statement. That black cab driver trusted me, okay? That's why he trusted me enough to tell me that. Okay, that's what that's what that is. <laughs> oh no. Without expressing shock, because when you express shock, it pushes you away from the blame. That makes me very angry because I don't look at that. What? I was born in 1950. You know what I expect of white women? Not a damn thing. No. Other than $5,000 a pop or a dinner like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, hey, listen, she's taking on emotional labor, okay? Let's keep it real. Like, she's putting in the work. Oh, this is awesome. Nothing. Get the bag. Get the I bag. I expect nothing of you. I can't trust you, okay? But how can we come together when you say something like, I will never trust a white woman? If we had a really hard to heart to talk, you said you would never trust me. But you know, out, out of all your years in life, <laughs> you've never trusted a white woman. Well, let me put it this way. The ones I have trusted have come back to disappoint you disappoint me this feels like the weird corporate inclusivity training where everyone kind of looks bad oh yeah there is definitely like look man capitalism will find a fucking way okay there is gonna be an opportunity when there is a will there's a way this is a new avenue okay this is a new avenue to make money that's what's going on here and i i respect it i respect the griff you're when, when regina's talking about her feelings and how she doesn't trust white women instead of saying my god well, how can, like, what, why? Like, what, what about me? That's what you said. Would you trust me? What if we had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation? Why are your feelings so hurt? Both of you, though, has been about... It's like a hate like, against this, us. Like, I feel like it's like... It's a, been very aggressive. Yeah. That really, like, hurts me that somebody would not... But oh. why are your feelings more important than the reality of that the violence of our lives? Imagine if your husband beats you and you confront him. Would you go and massage his back while you're confronting him? Why do we have to hold your hand? Can't we just tell you, hey, you guys have hurt us. This is what, what you've done. Now make it right. Bro, this is, dumb. this is so dumb. This is so dumb. I'm sorry. This is so f dumb. Holy shit. Bro, what the f <laughs> Like, if you're woke, you understand that every single person is a product of their environment okay and if you're woke you understand that that environment is bigoted there's an intersectionality of bigotry the heteronormative patriarchal transphobic homophobic uh, misogynistic anti-black envi environment okay so yelling at people uh when they're when they're doing like the lightest version of that bigotry is probably not a good way to like get them to agree you know what i mean you have to be at a position where like these people have to like 100% say, okay, you're a brown woman. Okay, you're a black woman. I'm just going to unconditionally listen to everything you are saying. Okay, that's where you need to be at in order to listen to what they're saying. Why are you siding with the racist? See, people are doing it already in the chat. I do anti-racist agit prop on a daily basis. I do have a lot of privilege and I try to use them for good. Dare I say, uh, I, I think I have a, a decent amount of success as well. I also understand why she doesn't trust me. I don't take that personally. And, and, and I'm asking and, a question on what could you do because as a white no, that's, woman, I mean, that's I guess it's we, not like, we have a lot of work to do. We have so much work to do. And, and so I don't, I don't take it personally because I understand that like that, that is her life. But to say you're your friend, but she doesn't trust you is also a hard thing for me to accept the same. This is my but friend, but, she's not but it's not but about also, me. Why on earth is it about you? Oh, excuse playing FIFA, baiting people into thinking that he's actually watching the World Cup. Is that what's going on? It, it, the fact, and, and also I want to come back to why would you say that we're spewing hate? We're telling you what it's like to be us. And, not everybody, you don't have to look at my color of my skin saying I'm white to not trust me. Why don't you look past that I'm white and say she's a good person? Because why her, her entire life, we've never given her a reason to trust us. Everything us. is not, not a white people. Not all white people are bad. Everything, not every white person is bad. I think that part of what... I have this discussion with people that I know, friends, lawyers, everybody, and they'll say, well, Regina, you know, there are some good white people. And I'll go, well, what have the good white people been doing for the last 450 years? 
What have you been doing? Obviously, it's not enough because nothing has changed. When you're in discussions with white people about racism, they like to say, well, MLK changed the world and he did it with nonviolence. And my question to them is, well, if he changed the world, why are we still here 50 plus years after his? Oh my God, did she just say MLK didn't do much? Like what is going on right now? What the f Yo, dude, what? Did MLK have dinners with white women? I think not. Checkmate. This is too much. I think I'm going to die. This is, I, I'm overdosing. This is too much content. I just want you to get clear. We're trying to tell you what it's like. People's feelings are hurt. We're spewing hate. And the first thing that a lot of you at this table have done has been this. And I want you to sit with that. I just want you to sit with that. You're saying that there was still racism after white women use MLK as if that means that now there's no racism. Like people are like, well, Obama was the black president. There isn't racism. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that there is white supremacy still very much alive and well, obviously. Do we have a white person ban in this country right now? Do we have a white woman ban in this country right now? Do we have a Christian ban in this country right now? We have a Muslim ban in this country. Well, and it makes sense with what happened with my son because the day before he got in the fight with the friend who was not a friend but was Muslim, the day before, I guess on the internet, it was kill the Muslims day. Oh my God. <laughs> he didn't know about, I didn't know about, but the school knew about. So then when he got in a fight with a, with a, a boy in his class who's Muslim that apparently had been going on for years, of course. But as a mother, how do I explain that to my son? Like, I don't know what is the right thing. That's your privilege. And you just, and you're yes, acknowledging it. of course. To say, I don't know how to talk to my son, he experienced, in his mind, and in my mind, he absolutely didn't, he experienced a tiny little fraction. My little eight-year-old boy, a little white girl told him, your skin is disgusting. Um, is your son at West Point to kill a Muslim day? <laughs> Stop. Oh, no. Dude, yeah, her son's going through basic. <laughs> How can we help our kids? How can we change it? Like, we have young children. Acknowledging Continue. your racism and acknowledging your white privilege and having a conversation with your kids from the time that they were little. They, it's 27 minutes in, they've talked about like, not a single structural inequality. Like what is happening? The, the ladies are all on the defensive, okay? Cause yes, they are racist, obviously, okay? And also simultaneously, they're being berated by uh, two women that they paid five grand for. And, and like, like there hasn't been a, a singular moment where everybody goes like, here are some of the reasons why systemic racism is real. Okay. Like I'm not a debate Lord or anything like that, but, but fuck, like at a certain point you got to just like, you know, pull some receipts up, but they have this attitude where it's like, it's not my job to educate you. You just need to sit your white ass down and listen. And that's the energy that a lot of these like anti-racist uh, courses have, which is so stupid. It is your job to educate them. It's literally your job. You got paid $5,000 to educate them. Let's continue. You guys need to come together because until and unless you come together, there's no hope for us. And right now what's happening is white Democratic women are attacking white Republican women and vice versa. And you both are taking the moral high ground and you're all the same. I knew that Donald Trump was going to win. The minute he started talking about Mexican I knew that was going to be a benefit, not a detriment. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're. I am the least racist person in this room. Are you <laughs> the least? Such fire, dude. He said, I'm the least racist person in this room. Like, I got a little bit of racism, but like, I'm the least racist. Just very quickly, you could just say, listen, when you say you're colorblind, when there's so much injustices happening, in an otherwise white supremacist society, you're basically just saying you're blind to such injustices happening, okay? When you say you're colorblind, you just mean you're blind to the injustices that are happening. That's it. Other people who are also just as uh, uh, blind to the injustices will agree with it. That's it. That's, why don't you say that? They did not say that. No, they basically did say that. No, they didn't. No, they said, no, they basically said colorblind is racist. That's it. She literally tried to engage in the semantic shit where she was like well you're you're seeing the the blood that that's red if you are living in a white supremacist environment like and you're a product of said environment clearly but you are willing to learn 
then you're, you know, you're not going to understand why that's wrong. Instead, he's trying to defend it. They're not happy here. They can leave. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these shithole countries here? What the hell is going on? But what Donald Trump's presidency has done for me has come. Well, the people of color, we got it, but I understand it's not a person with privileges in these examples because they can't read between the lines. Okay, but like, but the point is, you're not talking to people of color. You're talking to white women, and your goal is to educate white women. If your goal is to educate white women, you have to at least like try to educate them instead of just like telling them like, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist. Like, yeah, they are. They are. They literally are. You know, if you are an educator, like, can you imagine you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to college okay and your your calc 2 professor is like it's not my job to educate you learn it on your own it's like what the f do you mean no it literally is your f job so how many people in this room voted for donald trump okay <laughs> how many people did not vote for, for donald trump the ones of us who did not vote for donald trump do you think you're less racist than these two that's a weird judgment. No, that's I, not, know, we don't I, know, I think I'm more aware doesn't... of my racism than those two. That's pretty good. Point. The reason these conversations are hard is we've never had truth and reconciliation in this country. Based on the No, that's not the reason. The reason why these conversations are hard is because everyone is hardwired into thinking white supremacy is is the correct way to think. Because we live under white supremacist institutions. That's why even she said she, uh, with her upbringing, had white supremacist attitudes, and that's why she's anti-black. It's not because, like, we haven't had more polite dinner conversations about racism where we eat, like, the most mid-flavorless salad of all time. The enslavement of Africans, so brown and black, then the Chinese were brought in to build a railroad, and then, like, Asians, like me, where my family was brought in to deal with science. And by the way, the Indians left India because the British committed genocide in India. It's literally whiteness has killed the brown and black world. What? Donald Trump has not created racism. Donald Trump has shown us. Did you just say Indians like me were brought in to deal with science? Like what? Why is it that white people think they're the only Americans? that they think they're real Americans and the rest of us are like are pretend crazy. Americans. I think I have a little bit of a problem with the we versus I, but I think there's also we African Americans and the we were slaves, right? And we, these things happen. Yo, she is omega racist, dude. She wanted to say we was Kangs. Like she literally, she literally was, you know that like she corrected herself. Like she literally was like, she probably didn't remember that is what she had heard from other phrases people. That's crazy. That is, oh my God. Oh my God. And I, I, am, I am here. It happened to all African-Americans. Yeah. It didn't happen to you. Listen, oh listen, one of the things that- Oh, 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 this, okay, okay, okay. This is why I said, like, she kind of, I mean, she's getting paid a lot, but, like, also at the same time, like, she's also, she's eating it right now. Like, she's, oh, oh, shit, dude. That's like, that is, ooh, ooh, that didn't happen to you, she said. Wow. Wow, now it's getting spicy. It's turning into a Jubilee video, dude. <laughs> that we know. One of the Absolutely. things, let me just I, say. I have a lot of Native American science. history, and I don't. Dude, she hit every f white woman bingo. She said, she said, why can't we say it? Black people say it. She said, you as a black person haven't experienced slavery personally, so why are you complaining? And then she said she's Native. <gasps> oh. It's like, poof, 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 poof. I just got hit in the face. She, just, she literally hit every f line, dude. That's so good. That's so awesome. Take advantage of any of that. I Time out. Are you saying that black people, African-Americans, descendants of slaves are taking advantage of that? Oh. You just said. That's you not have, what I'm saying. You just said. Look, again, folks are on the wrong thing, okay? She didn't just say that. She said way worse shit, okay? What the fuck? No. And this is contentious. This is like antagonistic. She's popping off. She's alting, okay? There's two different levels of alt, okay? Yeah, white women tears, one alt. The other alt is like omega racism, okay? They're forgetting that there's the second Karen alt, which is when you just hit phase two and the tears turn into anger and violence, okay? Like I'm talking centuries of violence. That you have a lot of Native Americans right. and you don't take advantage. I'm taking advantage, advantage of the, the government's 
You actually know that more white people are on welfare oh. than black people, right? You know that, don't well, you? Sure. Well, I don't know I'm what sure that I ever is. statement. When people are, I feel like there's a lot of conversation where I constantly do feel like it is a we, African American culture, bad things are happening to us, big picture we. And I do agree that there is a lot of big picture we, bad things happening to us. All the time. I, and I've seen it first. At these dinners, we see white women behaving badly. And that bad behavior looks like denial of white supremacy, even denial of slavery. This has been going on for centuries. Fuck. I was so close to clapping your ass cheeks, dude. Sending the exact same fucking Snapchat from yesterday that got you one day banned, waiting for 24 hours after you got on, uh, waiting for 24 hours and then sending the same Snapchat, but then this time with the new caption POV, you are the top of the hour average and I'm Hasanabi. Good, good job. Good job. That's, that's, you know, you brought it back. Okay. It is the top of the hour and there's a six second ad break. Okay. If you want the races to win, you watch the ads. If you don't want the races to win, you subscribe. <laughs> <coughs> but honestly, what are they expecting these white women to do, though? I literally don't understand how they're expecting these white women to behave at dinner like this. And how do they think acting that way will help them get to that goal? Yeah, I don't know what the f*** is going on there. Like, I, I literally don't know. The, the fear that I have is that my son goes through the experience that he did. I'm not worried about... I'm worried about him becoming the white supremacist and pushing it down into the You do have the conversation. So yes, I have the conversation. Yeah, over and over and over and over and over again. It's the first step, just like you can't, just like Regina always says, like you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And the fact that you're able to acknowledge this is a big deal. It's not a small deal, it's a huge deal because it means you're open and instead of this. Like the one part of this dinner that is supposed to be the meat, okay, that's supposed to be like the f educational component has not happened yet. They have chipped away at their armor by being like, you're f racist. Some of them have like hardened their shell and been like, no, nah, f you. I can't believe you said I'm racist. Like, and then, and they, they're they eating, they, they ate the worst, coldest, most mid salads of all time. And yet I still have not heard anything about like systemic injustices. We kind of had this conversation before the dinner a little bit, and I got a sense of this, is that you read the book, The Secret, and you think that we can all get better lives based on good intentions. We just gotta be positive and like want good for our lives. But like what do you want about filling We are telling you, and you can Google police brutality, Google ICE, Mexicans, you know, Google Muslim ban. Those are like real. Oh my God. Oh no, is this the, please don't tell me that's the extent of what's happening here. Things. We're also anecdotally telling you things and you keep coming back with this frankly BS about love being love and love trumps. What I mean is that beyond the anger and the problems that we are feeling at the moment, each and every one of us, perhaps you two more at the moment, that there is something more to our, our beingness and it isn't the flesh, it isn't. And beyond that, this is the evolution of all of us. I, I, I know this, but we are transcending this. I, I really appreciate everything you're offering. What I want to hear from you is what you think is a, a solution. You've talked a lot, but I haven't heard, hey, this is what I want you ladies to do. Haven't I said repeatedly? Yeah, yeah go ahead. No, no. Um... I am a liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. We are the most dangerous women that exist because we want to think that we are better, that we are good, and that we're doing is about love and that we're gonna solve all the world's issues because we're gonna love a little more because we're good freaking people. No. We are erasing their experiences. We are erasing their lives. We are erasing the danger that they're in because we're trying to color it, and make it freaking pretty. By calling it love. By calling it love. And I'm sorry, but that is dangerous. Like, but that, that is I don't dangerous. think that's what I'm doing at all. But, but you totally have done it repeatedly. Yeah. Does love 
um, save the Mexicans who are in ICE facilities? Does love save Trayvon Martin? Does love save Sandra Bland? Does love save Mustafa Ayubi, who was assassinated in, in February for doing nothing? nothing. What does, I, I'm just, you know, you shit. ask us, what can we do? Seriously, and we've told you at least 10 times, you listen, <laughs> what, can, what can we do to achieve this love of which you speak? Hmm. Well, I think dropping the resistance is part of it. Bro, they're going to eat her ass, dude. They're going to eat her alive. Okay. <laughs> this is like, dude, this is the worst kind of, is this how anti-racist training goes? Like, am I crazy? The resistance to what? What are we resisting? It feels like a lot. It feels like a lot. And so I don't pretend to have all the answers at all. You haven't named one thing. You said it feels like a lot. She's asked you three times. What are we resisting? Name one thing that we're resisting. An answer, a solution that's different than what you think it should be. You literally employ the spiritual bypassing to get around any of the pain associated with oppression. I would love to say love is love. The next time someone sends me a note telling me that they're gonna drown my daughter, I'm gonna be like, you know what? <laughs> Downward dog it right now, love is love. But we can acknowledge, I'm gonna acknowledge well, that I yes, after you said that, I can acknowledge, yes, I see racism in me after I've said no because of what you women have said. We have to understand where it hurts. Where hurts, hurts. And we can't take away hurt from other people. I mean, and that's where I think we have to be sympathetic at one point, too. Thank you. Try not to add to that a little bit. It's like, we're not dying because we're white. I'm not not allowed to go somewhere because I'm white. So I can say love is love because nobody says, no, you can't. <laughs> People are saying, you can't come here. Even though we were all taught, right, in history that Yeah, when the sauce when the sta when the sauce starts boss, ooh, that wine is hitting, dude. That wine is hitting. It's time to clap, girl. We, this was fixed years ago. It was fixed. And my my kids, I will never know what my kids even feel like because they are part Hispanic and with Hispanic. I will never know their fear because I'm not there. I'll never know what they have what they bear. Do you realize that in this room, the Republican that voted for Trump have listened have more listened than you have. And, and, and she changed what she said. She said, actually, I get it. Yes. And yet See you happened? keep saying love is love. And that's why I'm saying white liberal women are the most dangerous because we think we're so good that we can't be part of the problem. The reason I am here is because of love. So to answer your question repeatedly, it is because of love. By showing you my pain, I have opened myself up so greatly to take more and more and more abuse. And why? Because I actually believe in you. You can deprogram yourself just like you did. Still working on it. In, over the course of one dinner, Marnie, you are able to even slightly open the window. I am more hopeful than you will ever know. This Oh my God, dude. They got like berated for an hour and they, they said, you know what? Yeah, maybe I am racist. And now it's like, now they get to feel better about themselves because like they've done anti-racist uh, training. So who in this room, raise your hand if you're a racist. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> woo! We did it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks guys. What the f Yo, I love this, dude. I can't believe this documentary was made, like, with sincere beliefs. Like, I, I thought this was just to make fun of them or something. Thank you. I can guarantee you, I know this with for a fact, they haven't forgotten. And they're thinking about this every single day. And even if one of them comes out of this in however amount of time and starts down the path, that's a win too. One year later, filmmakers checked in on the dinner guests to request follow-up interviews. Oh, brother. Listen, my ass is not raising my hand. Okay. Even if I'm a white supremacist, I'm not raising my hand in that dinner. Okay. On camera, no shot. 
Okay. <laughs> what our job is, I think, a huge part of our job, white people, is to help other white people wake up with us. I think the triggering process for many white women in a race to dinner setting can override the ability to just take a moment and go, wait a minute, I need to sit with this. Because we're so trained to, my reaction is right. As white people, it's like it's our white world. What I took away was just being able to recognize how white women react to being confronted on their racism. When we were leaving that night, I was feeling sad because I realized how much more work we have to do. To undo <laughs> systemic racism and misogyny is, is not, is not, I don't even know if it's something I'm gonna see in my lifetime, quite frankly. The first thing that I you did when I, when I came home is I made a post on my Facebook and I acknowledged where I see the racism in my own life and thought beliefs. Deeper level of racism present at that table is that the black woman genuinely wanted to curse them out like the Indian lady, but she can't because she doesn't want those women to walk away thinking an angry black woman yelled at them. Yeah, I mean, that's true. You're right. But also, the point is, like, listen, listen, listen. The point there is to do anti-racist education, right? Like, that's, if that's the goal, if that's the point, you can't be yelling at these people, man. You can't do that. What I saw as a result of that conversation was that as a white woman, I am the worst kind of dangerous if I don't wake up to see what's true here. There ain't no way my ass is putting my hand up after I paid five grand, okay? Five grand to say I'm racist on camera? F no, dude. You kidding me? By the way, this is the most 2016 ass documentary of all time, okay? I mean, I think they did this in like 2019 or whatever, but like this is like a like a Trump era remnant. It's like a relic from a forgotten time now. When things were going crazy okay where people were just like you know people were just going bananas sarah never followed up to the filmmaker follows yeah because sarah's voted for donald trump again okay i saw that white supremacy is not just a construct of the alt-right but something that lives within all of us and mostly unconscious to those who want to believe it's all love and light <laughs> I saw that racism is not something to hide from or pretend does not exist within me, as to do so keeps the power structures hidden and embedded. <laughs> None of the conservatives wanted to follow up? Yo! I'm exceedingly grateful to Cyra Rao and Regina Jackson for their willingness to show up, educate, and put their lives at risk to do it. I'm here to show up for what Bro, there is no way this documentary was supposed to be positive. Like, they. This is actually a positive documentary. Oh my God. I think my mom wanted me to watch this. Oh comfortable God. Comfortable so we can heal this pain and stop the violence. Are you? That was awesome. That was actually fire. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, some people deal with disgusting images, stereotypes, other forms of nature every day of their lives. MLK in his grave right now. <laughs> MLK's words are inspiring to me. We should judge people based on the content of the character. These two ladies are rejecting that. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I love when you guys bring up MLK. You agree with him on reparations, right? That's something you wanted. Do you know he also regretted his I have a dream speech? I don't agree with everything about any one person, including MLK. I do feel that we should judge people by the content of their character and not their skin color, though. <laughs> He's like, nah, I just want that part. The one that I can use to continue being racist. <laughs> Fucking NPC, dude.